Alright guys, Dominic here for KitGuru, and I think it is safe to say that Doom Eternal has been one of the most anticipated games of 2020 so far, a fact that has only increased since the game was pushed back from its initial launch date of November last year. So I have been lucky enough to actually been playing the game for the last few days now, so in this video we're going to take you through a full set of performance analysis, checking out just how well the game performs using a range of graphics cards, a range of resolutions and also different image quality settings. Just for some background information, Doom Eternal uses the new id Tech 7 engine and your choice of API is basically just Vulkan. Doom 2016 did let you choose between Vulkan and OpenGL, but there is no OpenGL option within Doom Eternal, so you will have to use the Vulkan API. Another really important thing to note just before we do get into just how well the game actually runs is basically the relationship between image quality and also your GPU VRAM capacity. So initially when I looked into the game I could see there are six different image quality options ranging from low all the way up to Ultra Nightmare. My initial intention was to benchmark all of our GPUs using the Ultra Nightmare preset just to see how tough that preset actually is and what performance we can expect. However, there are actually some very strict limits on VRAM capacity within Doom Eternal to the point where if you try and apply an image quality setting which the game says is going to use more VRAM than your card has physically available, it simply won't let you apply those settings and a little error message pops up telling you to try and lower your image quality settings and try again. So what that means is you are going to be limited by your GPU's memory in terms of what image quality settings you can actually apply. So just to give you some examples of what VRAM capacities you need for 1080p and the different presets, starting with 1080p low, here you are going to need a 3GB card, but more on that in just a second. To play 1080p medium, you're going to need a 4GB card, and it's also the same for 1080p high with a 4GB card. Once you step up to 1080p ultra settings, you'll need a 6GB card, and then for both 1080p nightmare and 1080p ultra nightmare, you will need over 6GB, so effectively at least an 8GB card. The one caveat I did find there was running the game at low settings at 1080p. I did think it was perhaps a bit harsh that say you have an older 2 gig card, you simply wouldn't even be able to run 1080p low settings because the game says you need, I think it's 2.9 gig VRAM capacity. So I did test this, I whipped out an old GTX 950 2GB and installed the card. Once I launched the game, thankfully I was glad to see that Yes, the game will still actually run using 1080p low settings, even though the 950 doesn't actually have as much VRAM as the game claims it requires. I did also try bumping up the settings to medium, but again, we were met with the same error message as before. I would be interested to hear from you guys though, if you do have a two gig card and you are planning on running this game at 1080p, do let me know your experience and how the game behaves down in the comments below. That strict limit on VRAM and image quality settings did affect how I tested the game. Obviously, I wasn't able to test all of the cards using the Ultra Nightmare settings as it simply wouldn't run. And I didn't really want to test all of our cards using something like the medium or high presets as if you have a 2080 Ti, there is just no way you're gonna be running this game using that setting. So what we did was we actually broke down our testing into three distinct groups based on VRAM capacity. So for all of our eight gig cards, all the cards that have at least eight gig of VRAM, we tested all of those together using the Ultra Nightmare preset. Then we looked at our six gig cards, something like the GTX 1060, and we grouped all of those cards together and tested those using the Ultra preset. Finally, for our cards with four gig VRAM, we grouped those together and tested those using the high preset. So that does mean that Taking figures from different charts, they're not really directly comparable as we are using different image quality settings. However, I did want to push each GPU as far as it would go in this game. We are now almost ready to dive into the actual numbers, but just before we do, a few quick notes on our test setup. First, as always, if you want to see our full testing methodology and all of our benchmarks, head over to kitguru.net. 
The second thing to note is that for all of our tests here, we are using our standard GPU test rig, which consists of an i7-8700K overclocked to 5 gigahertz, as well as 16 gigabytes of 3200 megahertz DDR4 memory. For these tests, we benchmarked a one minute run through in the game's first level. I did actually play through the game's first two levels, and honestly, this section here was the most demanding that I found. It's also worth noting that we used pre-release game-ready drivers from both AMD and NVIDIA that were supplied to us directly by Bethesda PR. Right then, that is really it for our preamble and we're going to dive straight into our results. So, starting with our 8GB cards using the Ultra Nightmare preset, at 1080p here the frame rates on show really were quite an eye-opener. Simply put, the game runs fantastically well on even the slowest of these cards, with the RX 580 still averaging 90 frames per second. And bear in mind again, I am going to stress this point, this is the most demanding image quality settings that the game has to offer. At the other end, gamers with a 2080 Super or a 2080 Ti will be pushing well over 200 frames per second, which I think is just simply crazy. Additionally, we can also see that the 1% lows across the board are nice and tight, so I really didn't notice any drop frames or any stuttering across any of the testing with these cards. So really, really strong performance in our initial test. Up at 1440p then, this does become a stiffer test for some of the lower end cards here, but even then, both the RX 580 and the 5500 XT 8GB still averaged over 60 frames per second and felt very smooth doing so. High refresh rate gamers will be served well by pretty much anything from the Vega 56 and up, and with both the 5700 XT and 2070 Super averaging around the 120 frames per second mark at this resolution. The big boy, the 2080 Ti meanwhile, is still able to push 180 frames per second, so even at 1440p those are some immense numbers. So we've seen 1080p and 1440p for those cards, but what about 4K? This does become a bit much for the likes of the RX 580 and even the GTX 1070. In my opinion, you want at least 60 frames per second when playing Doom Eternal, just to offer a smooth experience considering how fast the gameplay actually is. So in my opinion, those cards won't quite do the business at this resolution. Then again, cards we would typically consider as 1440p GPUs, like the Vega 64 and also the RX 5700 XT, are still pushing 60 frames per second at 4K using the Ultra Nightmare settings. Again, this is the highest the game has on offer, so that performance from the likes of the 5700 XT is still really, really impressive. For those out there who are lucky enough to have a 4K 144Hz monitor, you really are going to see the benefit of that if you have something like a 2080 Ti, as that GPU is still averaging over 100 frames per second, while its 1% lows is also still over 80 frames per second. So again, really, really immense performance. So clearly, if you do have an 8GB card, I think Ultra Nightmare settings are really not going to be a problem. Even the now getting on RX 580 is able to push almost 100 frames per second at 1080p and it still offers very strong performance at 1440p. So it is really, really good to see such high frame rates from Doom Eternal. But what about those 6GB cards? I'm sure there are lots of GTX 1060 owners out there watching this video wondering just how well their card is going to perform. After all, it is still the single most popular GPU according to the Steam hardware surveys. So let's look at that performance data now. Starting at 1080p, that trusty 1060 is still going strong and it averaged just over 80 frames per second with ultra settings, delivering a very smooth experience at this resolution. Newer cards like the GTX 1660 and 1660 Ti do improve on that performance significantly though, with frame rates around the 115 to 120 FPS mark. If you've bought an RTX 2060 as well, maybe since the price has come down, you can expect to hit almost 150 frames per second using the ultra image quality settings. AMD's newest GPU, the RX 5600 XT, does actually edge slightly ahead of the RTX 2060 at 1080p, but I have to say that frame rates are very high for both GPUs, so the difference between them really isn't very significant at all. 
For the 1440p gamers out there, GTX 1060 can just about deliver a good experience here, but like I said, I would personally want to keep frame rates up at 60 FPS at all times, which the 1060 can't quite manage, but then again, you may not mind so much and those figures may, you know, tick your boxes just fine. The other four GPUs on this chart though did stay above 60 FPS at all times when gaming at 1440p, and both the 5600 XT and RTX 2060 averaged over 100 frames per second at this resolution. Once again, those 1% lows are also nice and tight, and I really didn't notice any choppiness throughout the playthrough, so very, very solid performance from these cards. We did also test at 4K using these cards, really just more for interest as they're not really 4K GPUs, um, but honestly, the 2060 and 5600 XT did okay, averaging around 45 to 50 frames per second, but again, like I've said a couple of times now, it is a much better experience when you have the higher frame rate. So if you do own one of these cards, I would suggest sticking to 1440p and getting the significantly higher frame rates. So far, we've looked at performance from our 8 gig cards and our 6 gig cards. But what if you have a 4 gig GPU? Well, starting at 1080p, remember here we were having to use the high preset for the image quality settings but we are still seeing very impressive frame rates considering the caliber of GPUs on show. Even the lowly GTX 1650, the non-super version that is, held above 60 frames per second and averaged over 70 frames per second. And remember, this is with image quality settings cranked as high as the game will allow for these GPUs. The RX 5500 XT 4 GB and GTX 1650 Super GPUs were also hovering close to that 100 frames per second mark so I really think it is clear by now that Doom Eternal is going to offer you significantly higher frame rates than you typically see with one of these cards. As our final test then, we did also try these GPUs at 1440p, though again, due to the VRAM limits, we actually had to drop texture settings down to medium for this test. Even then though, this was still a very manageable situation for the 5500 XT and the 1650 Super, with both cards averaging over 60 frames per second, but I would definitely say this is a step too far for the likes of the RX 570, as well as the 1650 Non Super, even with those texture settings dropped down a notch. So that is really gonna do it for all of our testing, and I have to say, I think it is absolutely crystal clear Doom Eternal is going to run very, very well across a wide range of hardware. If you are lucky enough to have a 2080 Super or a 2080 Ti, high refresh rate gaming at 4K is going to be absolutely no problem. And even cars we would consider to be more 1440p GPUs like the 2070 Super and RX 5700 XT are going to do a very solid job offering you a 4K 60 frame per second experience. Dropping down a tier to the likes of the 1660 and even the 5600 XT, again, very strong performance using ultra settings. Those cards are more than capable at 1440p gaming using the ultra image quality settings. Finally, for those lower end cards like the 1650, even that is strong enough to offer a 1080p 60 frames per second experience using the high setting. So simply put, I am really, really impressed with just how well Doom Eternal runs across a range of hardware. The main limiting factor here really is going to be the amount of VRAM your card has. As like we mentioned earlier, that VRAM capacity does limit what image quality settings you can use. So if you have a 3 gig or a 4 gig card, don't expect to come in and run ultra nightmare settings. That being said, I don't actually think this is a huge issue, as even on low settings, which is the lowest option, I still think the game is actually really good looking. We are going to show a few comparisons here just between ultra nightmare side by side with low, so the theoretically worst looking and the best looking in the game. And honestly, I have to say that obviously the difference is noticeable, but I still think low looks pretty good. That is only going to be more so when you are actually running around playing the game. If you stop and look, you might notice a few more things, but just considering how fast paced Doom Eternal actually is, even using low settings, I think still looks good and is still going to offer you a very, very good gaming experience. So that really is it for this video, guys. Like I said, I'm really, really impressed with how well Doom Eternal actually runs. 
I think id Software has done a fantastic job with this one. So if you are going to pick up this game, let me know what card you have, how you found it would run on your system. I'd be really interested to hear your guys' experiences down below. You can also toss us a thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't already. Check out our Teespring for t-shirts like this if you want to pick up one of those. And lastly, it would also be awesome if you guys would consider backing us on Patreon. You get extra perks such as seeing some of our content early and you also get access to some exclusive giveaways. Until then though guys, I'm Dominic Forkit Guru and I'll see you in the next video.